Welcome to the Love Thy Lawyer podcast, where we talk to practicing attorneys about their lives and careers. I'm Lewis Goodman. My guest today, Vicki Jensen, is a genuine down-to-earth attorney who fights for her clients. From the beginning, she knew she wanted to do courtroom work in the criminal arena. She takes on jury trials, preliminary hearings, and motions to suppress. Vicki is born and raised in Alameda County. She developed her people skills while tending bar. Vicki speaks at continuing education programs and teaches litigation skills to other attorneys. Vicki Jensen, welcome to Love Thy Lawyer. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. Vicki, where is your office right now? I just moved to Alameda. I am on Harbor Bay Parkway, which is Harbor Bay Island. How do you like being there? I like it. It's The weather is nice. Where are you from originally? I grew up in the Bay Area. I was born and raised in San Leandro, California. I went to high school at San Leandro High. And when you graduated from San Leandro High, where did you go to college? I, I'm a local girl. I went to Chabot College and then Cal State Hayward. And when you graduated from Cal State Hayward, you ultimately went to law school. Did you take some time off between Cal State and law school or did you go right through? No, I actually took time off between high school and college. Oh, really? So what did you do between high school and college? I was a waitress for a while, and then I was a bartender. So you had some real world experience before you went to college. And a daughter. And a daughter. Wow. Yes, I went back to college when I was pregnant with my daughter. Well, how was that experience? It was, it, it was interesting. My daughter went to preschool at Cal State Hayward. We had an early education center up there. And having a you know, really focused place to do my best in, in school and you know, take everything very serious because I was a family of two. So do you think having taken some time off and worked and then having a daughter, do you think that really kind of focused you for college and for law school? Most definitely. When did you first start thinking about being a lawyer? I grew up in an era that, you know, when I was in high school, women were either waitresses or secretaries. Yeah, nobody really thought of us ever going to law school. But and you did. Started saying, huh? But you did. You thought about going to law school. Well, yes. So things started changing when I was getting older and growing up. And um, the idea was kind of like a fantasy at first. And then when I started doing lower in college, then it was kind of like, okay, I think I could really do this. And when I was bartending, you know, because I used to bartend at night and go to school during the day. Some things happened that really focused me. And, you know, I decided I, I really wanted to do it. So, what, what really focused you? Well, you know, there was an elderly lady that, you know, used to come into the bar. And she used to come down there and she used to meet with her sister that would get off work at glass container, Illinois, whatever you want to call it. And she got arrested for a DUI. And this is a lady that I never heard swear. She used to make brownies. And she came in and, you know, she was barely playing away. But uh, and we're talking about a very senior old, old lady that, maybe sopping wet was 100 pounds. She had these huge bruises on her wrist, and she was just treated, treated very poorly by the police. So it, you know, she used to bring me cookies and stuff like that. So I just kind of was very inspired to help people. Like, And that's when you decided you should go to law school? Well, I mean, I had always wanted to go to law school, but that's when I kind of decided that I wanted to help people that were accused of crime. Now, where did you go to law school? I went to Southwestern down in Los Angeles. And what prompted you to go to L.A. to go to law school after living so much time in the Bay Area? 
I was ready for a change. And also I, they offered me a scholarship. It was a full scholarship, but it was enough to make it different. And I felt as though I, you know, I researched the school and it seemed like it was a very good school. It was a challenging school. It certainly wasn't easy, but it had some very good benefits to it as opposed to some of the, I think going, getting out of the area where I knew everybody allowed me to really stay focused because as you know, law school is very hard. Did your daughter go down there with you? Yes. What did your friends and family say when you told them that you wanted to be a lawyer and you were going to law school and you were really headed in that direction? Like I said, you know, when I was young, people, you know, when I was like in high school and whatnot, people didn't really think that women could do that kind of thing. But, you know, then when I graduated from Chicago, people started thinking, oh, my God, she's really going to do this. And then when I graduated from, you know, then when I got accepted in law school and I graduated from South State and it was like, oh, my God, she's really going to do this. And so, yeah. And they were all behind me. But like I said, at first they thought I was just kidding around. When you graduated from law school, what was your first legal job? My first kind of legal job was when I was, well, I was clerking. And I clerked for a span at Santa Cruz. I was a defender. And then while I was studying for the bar and waiting for a bar result, I worked for an attorney over in San Francisco. You did some work for a district attorney's office too, didn't you? I I did a semester of work study or whatever you want to call that. Yes, for LA district attorney's office. What did you think of the prosecution side? I felt much more... It, in my environment when I, you know, went to Santa Cruz and I started working at the PD's office. You've been practicing law for over 20 years now, is that correct? Yeah. And you have a very successful practice where you have your own office. Can you talk a little bit about how you got to the point of running your own law firm? When I graduated and passed the bar, nobody was hiring. So I actually ended up bartending for a little while. And I met another attorney at a seminar, and he offered me to be able to use his office for a couple of appearances a month. And, you know, that was my rent. So I just started practicing. And I made did special appearances for other attorneys, and pretty soon I was able to start picking up my own client, and and it just kind of blossomed from there. I got onto the court appointed, and I like doing that because it gives me some variety that I don't normally get. I get to represent people who are indigent and who you know can't afford an attorney. They've never had a whole lot, and I'm helping people. You did very well when you were in college. Obviously, you're a very bright person. You could do pretty much anything that you want to do. What is it about practicing law that you really like and that keeps you in the practice of law? I would say helping people, you know, being able to, you know, I mean, our clients, they get themselves into predicaments that they, you know, I wouldn't say that my clients are necessarily bad people. They just made a mistake. And for the most part, you know, they sometimes need a little help figuring out how to straighten their life out. If a young person was just coming out of college, would you recommend the law as a career choice? Sure. Why? It has its benefits. And I, I, you know, there's a lot of versatility with law. So there's areas of law that, you know, could be beneficial to various people, you know, depending on what they want to go into. And, you know, if you get tired of one area, you can always modify your practice to give yourself a little bit more variety. What kind of cases do you usually handle? 
for the, the court-appointed cases, I'm a class three felony attorney, which means that my clients are facing up to 10 years of state prison. And um, they're typically people who are charged with burglaries and robberies and various low-level felony cases. Sometimes they had driven a car that wasn't their own or they were involved in something that got them into some trouble. I know you also do a fair amount of DUI cases and you seem to have a certain expertise in DUI law. How did you get involved in that and what interests you about DUI law? Well, when I first started practicing, the attorney that I was borrowing the office from or working, you know, off the office from, he did a lot of DUI work and he helped me learn how to do it. How about the business of practicing law? How's that gone for you? You know, as attorneys, we are lawyers and we lawyer and we represent clients, but we also run businesses. How has the business of practicing law gone for you? And Well, it, it's been okay. My, my kid taught me how to just keep track of my expenses, and he's really trained me along. I used to bring all my receipts in and a great big box. And he said, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> so I, I I got a lot better with it because, as you know, in the middle of doing trials and everything else, you, you know, when you're at practice of one person, you tend to not be able to keep track of things as good as you need to. So I, over the years, I learned how to get much more disciplined in keeping track of things. Is there anything that you know now that you really wished you knew before you started practicing? Oh, yeah. Like what? You, you got to keep balance. You got to keep your hobby. The, they really, they, they say that the law is a jealous mistress. And there's a certain amount of truth to that, that you, you have to keep balance or it will make you crazy. What do you think's the best advice you've ever received? Don't be afraid to take care of Be prepared. And what advice would you give to a young lawyer who was just starting out? Oh, take cases to trial. Why? Why Why do you think that's so important? Because when you announce ready for trial, amazing things happen. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, you'll always get what the free trial offer is. Right. So if you take it right up to the moment of trial, it might get better. And if you actually try the case, well, you never know what could happen. Yeah. No one ever knows what a jury's going to do, do they? No. And I mean, you're certainly not going to take a, you know, a, a terrible case to trial. But if there are some defenses and your client wants to take the case to trial, then certainly, you know, don't try and discourage them. They were there. They know what happened. And, you know, if they're willing to, you know, take it to trial, then by all means do it. Do you think the legal system's fair? I have I have doubts at times. What will you change about the way the legal system works if you could? I think that, you know, it needs more social services, more things like diversion. You know, again, most of my clients, they're not bad people. They just made a mistake. And, sometimes, you know, sometimes they just need to get the tools to be able to turn their life around. I've seen a lot of people, you know, turn it around, you know, knowing that they would be able to get this case dismissed if they went through and did what they needed to. But you probably remember back in the day when we had drug diversion in Peggy Gore's courtroom. I do. Yeah, and I... I I saw a lot of people turn their lives around in that as well. A, a client of mine, you know, that went through Peggy Gore's drug diversion. She showed up one time to um, be the notary to do my, my loan documents when I bought a house. Wow. That is turning things around, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I mean, sometimes these people, they, they just need some help. What's your family life been like and how is practicing law fit into that? I know you have a daughter and you're, I think your daughter's an attorney as well and 
been quite successful. That's it. She, she's an attorney up in Reading. What she, sort of work is she doing? She's actually doing felony. As a private attorney or is she working? She she is a, she was a public defender for a while and then she left the office and went to their court appointed panel, which operates a little bit differently than ours. And she's a felony attorney up there. She's actually working on a murder case right now. Well, so she's following in the family footsteps. In practicing law and in raising your daughter, how did those things work together? If I knew that my daughter had anything pending, like a band recital or a cheer competition or something like that that I wanted to attend, I would just cross that off of my calendar and say, I'm not available. And so I was able to attend all those things. Which, like I said, you got to have balance in this, otherwise it'll make you crazy. So I was able to watch my child grow up. Are there there any books or movies about the law that that you you really liked that you think are interesting you'd recommend to someone? My Cousin Vinny. A lot of people seem to really like that. What is it about My Cousin Vinny that you enjoy? Oh, I'm so fast. She does a fabulous job. And, you know, I, I think that comic relief and it uh, not being the bad guy. In other words, being the good guy for a change. What mistakes do you think lawyers make? Not being prepared enough or just accepting what they're told. You know, that they don't question the police report enough. I love that we have videos now. Do you think that? really helps defend ants? Oh, yeah. How do you define success? And where in life? Yeah. Being happy. Feeling as though you have fulfilled some of your dreams and you've got people around you that are happy and you're able to find joy in life. Have you ever had a near-death experience? And if so... Yeah, did it tell tell us about it? And if, and if and and did, it, did that in any way kind of change your view of the world or how you saw your life going forward? Well, I had cancer about ten years ago, and I went through radiation and chemo, and it it, it was a life changing event. In what way? So, well, you know, we're only here for. A short amount of time, so you need to, you know, make the best of it. Forget how finite we really are. Yeah, no, I think that's true. Vicki, if you came into some real money, let's say three or four billion dollars, what, if anything, would you do differently in your life? Oh, I'd retire and just travel. Where would you go? Europe. I've never been to Europe. I'd love to go. A lot of places, China. See the world. Yeah, pretty much. Let's say you had a magic wand. There was one thing in the world, legal world or otherwise, that you could change. What would that be? Oh, I would, if there was something that I could change. Yeah. Have people be nicer to each other. I think there's just too much nastiness in the world now. Vicki, how do we get in touch with you? If somebody wants to talk to you, an attorney wants to ask you some questions about court litigation or someone listening to this wants a lawyer and they want to reach out to you for representation, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Is there a website where we can reach you? Well, there is my website and you can always call me. So what is your website? Vicki Jensen, well... I'm not even sure what it is, but if you Google me, it comes up. So just Google Vicki Jensen attorney and we'll yes. get to your website. Okay. And what's the phone number that people can reach you at? There you go. 510-785-5700. Vicki Jensen, thank you so much for joining me today on the Love Thy Lawyer podcast. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Yes, thank you. That's it for today's episode of Love Thy Lawyer. If you enjoyed listening, please share it with a friend and follow the podcast. 
If you have comments or suggestions, send me an email. Take a look at our website at lovethylawyer.com where you can find all of our episodes, transcripts, photographs, and information. Thanks to my guests and to Joel Katz for music, Brian Matheson for technical support, Paul Roberts for social media, and Tracy Harvey. I'm Lewis Goodman. You want to start over on that? Well, let's try a different question. Let's, let's not talk about this one.